you got a new one. I am the shave. I'm 18. I drink, I fight, I steal. Oh. Trust me, dealing with a bunch of young delinquents is not the easiest of things to do. More often than not, it gets dangerous and scary. Here are some of the worst prison tours on Beyond Scared Straight. My name is Cortagian. I'm 15. I get in trouble for fighting, smoking weed, and gangbanging. Girls get on my head open me with a sock with batteries in it. Then they caught the police. I'm there with my grandma and my papa. I don't live with my mom. Yes, in possession of marijuana. I don't want my daughter to follow the same mistakes I did. Because I seen what it did to my daughter. Like her peers, 15-year-old Cortesia loves to fight a little too much, and her grandma is rightfully scared she might end up in jail like her mom. Maybe a little reality check of life in prison might be helpful to set her straight. What's funny? What's so funny? Take them shoes oh, off. Uh, take them out. So you ain't gonna so take you off your shoes? You, you ain't gonna take them out. Take them out. However, like many young delinquents, Cortesia feels tough and unstoppable. She yells back at the inmates, which visibly gets them pissed, and a dangerous moment follows. I'm KK, I'm 25, and I'm Tiny's daughter. I want you to get mad, because I want to break your ass down. That's what you got to do. I don't like it. I don't yeah. give, well, do something in it. Do something. Ow. Do something. Like I said, do something. It would be like, I don't care. Oh, That's not going to get you nowhere. You doing all That's not going to get you nowhere. Watch that don't make me. Right, make me. Blood. blood. All right. What the all right, What blood. the My face, all that spitting, homie. I don't care. All right. Yet another inmate desperately tries to break Cortesia, but she appears as hard as a rock. She's yet to get the memo about life in prison and keeps putting herself in danger. Save for the deputy's intervention, she would have gotten her little ass whooped real bad. Oh, you coming straight to jail. Watch you watch a if I was online. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. If you touch her, you're going to jail today. The Put switch your pride right to the side for once. For once. Your pride is going to get your ass whooped. You We're trying to save you. You really don't care, don't you? I have never met a person who don't care so much. You don't give a about your life, man. So far, nothing appears to phase Cortesia about life in prison. Not the inmates, not even the deputies. Well, the inmates had some last words for her. Will she change? Will she end up in jail like her mama? Only time will tell. I am Lashavia. I'm 18. I drink, I fight, I steal. Did that punch hard? If Lashavia had used this strength for productive endeavors like boxing, she would have never found herself on Beyond Scared Straight. But sadly, here she is. I hit, I hit real hard. I mean, these hands are official. The last time I fought the girl, I bust a lip, her nose was bleeding. I chased her for like five seconds or so. Then she started screaming, and she was like, stop, stop. And I stopped, and I kicked down her face, and I left. So if I feel like you're going to try to jump on me or do something stupid, I ain't going to shoot you, because I don't want to go to jail for the rest of my life for murder. I'm going to pick up a, a stick or a brick or whatever and knock your head off. Lashavia recounts her escapades, and you could tell she's really proud of herself. She feels tough and all. You just don't care. It's just a wow. It'll be fixed. <sighs> Lashavia is out of control. Like most participants, Lashavia, an 18-year-old teenager, is on the show for fighting and related delinquent behaviors. She clearly does not care about anything or anybody. Will the sh Stand outside your door. Stand outside your door. Ladies, there is a cup over there that has your initials on it. Go get you some water. Go do it now. Move! For someone as strong and fearless as she claims, Lashavia must have been shocked to realize that her power and choice are extremely limited in prison. One could be forced to do anything in prison, including to drink water, and one would not have a choice. You lucky we give me water. The way you act, are you lucky you get anything to drink? Get your water and let's go, ladies. Put your cup back on the table. Line up on the wall. Let's move it. 
You better drink that water. While the rest of the girls move quickly to the command of the deputies, strong-headed Lashavia moves sluggishly. She appears to be daring them to do their worst, a clear sign of impending danger. Move! What are you taking your old sweet time for? Oh, 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 really? oh. Hey, you know? The impatient deputy nudges Lashavia to move faster, and Lashavia resisted aggressively, which then led to a dangerous scene. Hopefully, Lashavia will learn a little lesson from this. I'm gonna treat you like a bitch. You gonna call my Chester whenever I tell you. Up next, comb my chest hair. You ain't got no Usually, to discourage young participants from a life of crime, inmates are allowed to howl at the participants to scare them out of crime. Most times, these scenes turn pretty chaotic and dangerous. My name's Justin, 28 years old. Jail ain't no place for no little kids. You get thrown into the lion's pit, and they see you as fresh meat. You ain't no gangster, you're a little-ass kid. They'll take you, man. You'll be, you'll wind up in a bitch somewhere. You ain't even got a loud voice, man. Can't even hear you scream, bitch-ass. You ain't Sit your bitch ass down, man. Sit your bitch ass down. You ain't oh, hear me? Can't hear him say Sit your bitch ass down. Yeah, look at In this episode, things began to take a dangerous turn when an inmate singled out Kenneth, a 16-year-old who was in for gangbanging and fighting. You just home? I'm going to treat you like a bitch. you going to call my chest, sir, whenever I tell you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and this old hoe ass going to do it Thursday, Fridays. Stand your ass up, too. One by one, the inmates give their motivational speech to an indifferent Kenneth, and by extension, the other kids. However, when the inmate with the chest hair took over the stage, you can sense immediately that a lot of chaos and aggression are about to go down. Give him the comb, man. Make him comb that comb. bitch. You know what? Open it up. Comb his chest. Comb his About to go down. This inmate wants the young boys to understand the demeaning things they wouldn't be made to do if they were ever in prison. However, he could not wait for them to be imprisoned, so he asked the boys to comb his chest hair. Right now, yeah. get your ass. Look why you're doing it. It better not hurt me. Better not. You a Let's what give it to the next is. man. Or give it to him. That's what I, I, I wish you don't do it. Sorry. Be glad. You sorry, folks. Visibly disgusted, but more frightened, David took the comb and went to work. Now it was Kenneth's turn to take the comb. Grab. Grab the comb. Grab the comb, dog. Watch out, man. Grab the comb, dog. It's the last time I'm gonna tell you. Grab that comb, man. Grab that comb, dog. I ought to beat your ass. Man, let me go, man. Man, let me go, man. I ought to beat your ass. Let me go. You probably almost kick your ass. Now, hey, look at You know what you're gonna do? I'm pulling back for your ass. Get your ass over here. Get your ass over here. Kenneth's actions riled up the inmates, especially the one on the white vest. The brewing chaos eventually erupted as he almost beat Kenneth up. It's not for little kids. It's grown ass men out there doing grown ass things. What are you gonna do if you get in there with my homie that just walked out of here? Will Kenneth and the rest of the kids heed the words of the inmates and stay out of trouble? Yet again, only time will tell. If I can have your attention, I need you parents to know this is a hands on program. If you do not want us to place our hands on your child, you and your child need to exit this building at this time. In the next scene, we see the female sheriff briefing the kids' parents about the program, like she knew a dangerous situation was coming up real soon. Obviously, if you do not want your kids to be touched, then Beyond Scared Straight is not the place for them. Snuff. Get up, remove anything in your pockets. Take your belt off, any body piercings, earrings, shoestrings. Let's go, gentlemen, hurry up. If you can't do it, we will do it for you. Since no parents left with their kid, they have consented to their kids being touched. So, the sheriff's got to work immediately, dishing out orders to the kids and almost allowing them no breathing space. Your arms will remain at your sides. You will look straight ahead. What are you messing with your pockets for? Man, man. What? I said I gotta put my pants up. You gotta do what? Pull my pants up. No, you don't. Yes. What the this tell you to do? While the rest of the kids cooperated with the sheriffs and did exactly as they were told, one did not. He talked back at the sheriffs. Considering his body language, he must have thought the whole thing was a joke. Who the f are you talking to? Come here. 
I told you once, hands down at your side. Is there any problem with the English language that you don't understand? One thing about very mouthy people is that they get into trouble real quick. And unfortunately for this young lad, the sheriffs were ready to set him straight immediately. Stand up? No. You don't want to stand up. Stand up here, man. Stand up here, man. Remarkable, isn't it? Yep, bitch, yes it is. It must have been really hard for the kid's mother to sit through all the chaos and violence. It must have taken a great deal of restraint on her part. Hopefully, the kid will get the reformation he needs. David, stand up. Do you have a shirt on underneath that jacket? Yes, I do. Take it off. You do what you're told here. You understand that? I don't know who you're talking to. You're not talking to me, miss. Really? Yeah. You have cuffs on you, Deputy Clark? You're back. That's right. Dude. In another episode at Oneida County, these young boys were all smiles and jokes until they began to find out that life in prison is not pleasant. I'm 15 years old and I've got an anger issue. I've broken things around the house all out of anger. <laughs> if I was pissed off. Dude, I didn't do anything wrong. Dude, she was disrespecting me. This is my house. It's not your house. David probably thought he was still at home where he could be mad at his mother without control. He'll realize fast that jail is a dangerous place to be. Johnny and Dante been friends for about seven years. We like bros. If whoever cries owes the other two five dollars. I don't think I will cry. I think I can handle a little yelling and stuff into my face. I think Dante will cry. This is gonna be easy five dollars for me and Jay. Johnny, Dante, and Darren, three friends with an affinity for crime. Soon enough, they will know that jail is a lonely place. lifestyles are going to lead them somewhere it doesn't it leads you here where i'm sitting here today soon things became heated up with lots and lots of yells you could tell from the boys faces that they are not enjoying any bit of this now you're going to get to see what they get to eat every day and you're going to eat it until it's gone because this is it five o'clock here's dinner man Enjoy. until it's every gone bit of it. every bit of it. and you better it's hurry up you guys better start chowing down quick you see how it tastes you like it? Stuff tastes like straight <laughs> That's like eating <laughs> damn cat But we don't have so a choice. Despite all that has been going on, little boy Darren still thinks it's all a joke. The inmates smoked him up for real. Kids, you want to play too? No. You're going to stop being a dick? Yes. Yeah. Keep there. Keep there. <laughs> going to be treated? No, And that's with us. Darren still got into trouble again. He finally got himself in danger and became a scapegoat for the other participants. Too bad for him. Hopefully this experience will deter him from crime. You put rolling papers into a jail? Look paraphernalia! I've done salvia, uppers and downers, spice, cannabinoids, opiates, <laughs> Ritalin. I would've hit hard. Get in! You be running the streets with this. Somebody will kill you for this, man. You won't be going home today. Because I was rapping? If you throw up, clean it up. Beyond Scared Straight showcases unimaginable kids with troubled backgrounds who are uninterested in reform. Bad boy Barney ends up in maximum security, while deceptive little James flees with his parents' possessions. The group of troubled kids is going to leave you stunned, and the possessed witch, Cortasia, steals the show with her disturbing performance. Move! Your arms will remain at your sides. You will look straight ahead. What are you messing with your pockets for? Man, man. What? I said I put my pants on. You got to do what? I told you once. Hands down at your side. Is there any problem with the English language that you don't understand? Do you Let's try that again. Okay. And? You better watch your mouth. You are not at home, gentlemen. You are not at home. You will not disrespect me in my house. Is that, is that understood? And here's her no man. Oh, no. It's a simple game. Well, f on you, boy. The record has it that the only legendary kid whom the Beyond Scared Straight program would not tame is Barney. Now, apparently, he didn't respect the officers when he stepped onto the show. Bitch, I'll put me on the ground then. Why don't you, bitch? Did don't you touch me like a. Stand up? No. He said he don't want to stand up. Stand up. Arkable, isn't it? Yep, bitch, yes it is. In less than a minute, there's a need to restrain Barney. His nuisance is going to rub off on the other kids if allowed any more time.
Are you better than that? You're gonna let him get the better of you? Shut the Shut the up. The wrong side to Barney's legendary story is how he takes things personally at every strike. It's rational to allow three strikes per person before retaliation. Slow. Bring your arms down, okay? Slow. You're better. You're better than that. If thus were processed into the show or where I'm from, Barney would be on his way to the psychiatrist. Now he can prove his sanity there. Prison ain't gonna do the job. You all talk, bitch. It ain't worth it. Stop. It's a spit hood. Spit hood. Oh, Barney, 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 Barney. Maximum security is raised on Barney. Still, he won't keep mute about his opinions. Who is this kid? What's he got his gaze on? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Where are your hands supposed to be? You got a. You poured rolling papers into a, a jail? Um, I didn't know they were in my pocket. No matter where you are. You got rolling papers. So you wore jeans and didn't wash them? Terrible now. I'm Justin. I do drugs. I'm gang affiliated and I run away. A stoner's visit almost becomes permanent when he makes a rookie mistake. Justin has had a lot of bad habits, and his parents don't want to risk finding out, which would send him to prison before doing something to help Justin change. Impulsive, adolescent teenager, and the downfall. That's like how I summed it up in my head. So, I mean, I've been smoking weed since I was like nine. <laughs> Justin is, for a fact, in love with smoking pot. EMA. His whole disposition has changed in the last 12 months. That would hit hard. Justin has to be one of the most enthusiastic participants ever. Now it's probably because he's got no plans of changing. Like he's been in the smoking business for too long to have any worries in the world. About right there. Teach somebody. good if he's been on 100 fights. Little Froggy, you want to leap? Well, if I was Little Froggy, I wouldn't leap. You want to leap? So is it a You get worse. Where you think you're going? You don't wait in here. We run you from now on till you leave here. Do you want do you want to stay? Do you want to stay in here? What you want? You not you can't look up. Don't fight her. Don't fight her. Easy, easy, don't easy. fight her. Don't I got her. Don't fight her. I got her. And forget Justin, there are other troublemakers in the group, at least for now, the officers have their attention somewhere else and have forgotten the paraphernalia stint. This room just keeps on getting smaller for the officers and in intake as the tension rubs against them. I get pissed off very easily by the littlest thing. I'm okay. I can handle myself. My daddy been gone for most of my life, and me and my dad was real close before he left and went to jail. You mess with my brother, you gotta mess with me. If somebody wants to jump with my brother. My name is Jamel. I fight, I steal, and I love BB guns. Fist from punching people in the face. Jamel has physically assaulted a principal at, at the school and they're looking to press charges against Jamia. Jamia is a highly profiled fighter, as testified by those who have crossed her path. Now her mom and her brother in crime told tales of her honor. Jamia scares me. He's falling more and more into the street. <laughs> you always think things funny. Okay, well we'll see. We can see who's gonna be laughing in there. I need to know, is this where you want to be? What? No, man. What are you supposed to say? Like his sister, Jamel developed a tendency for devilish acts at a young age. Now, these young minds need to be adequately curbed now while still young to reprimand the raid of menaces on the street. I ain't over here to get that. Oh, you hungry? For, yeah. You coming off a high? No. Nah. Okay. Got these. You got them. Let's go. Let's go. You got about a minute and a half. When I say it's time to finish. Ladies, when we give you a tray and you do not eat... We will go to court, get a court order, and we will forcibly feed you. Good job. 15 seconds. Come on, why don't you get your trays back? They got to get washing. What? What was the name of that bread, yeah? They had some sweet stuff, man. That was a piece of cake. 
One, that's it. Nasty. All right, listen up, people. We won't make a determination of how long security in these cells. Do you understand? Yes. Sir. Justin, unlike his peers, feels at home in prison. This tour might have just shown him the perks of coming to jail, like yummy cake, rather than why he should stay out. It's sinister, but a junkie's got to eat. I got a bitch to get to. <laughs> oh, I need me a blunt. Most of the time, the kids come in our caves. They don't know that and we can't hold them all night. Hopefully, y'all will make it back. Man, I'm gonna go home. It didn't dawn on the kids immediately, but they've been tricked and are gonna stay in the cell room through the night. It is time to start pouring it. I'm hot enough to score that I'd rather torture it like a horror flick. Burn the kids, I'm hotter than global warming is. The kids don't even get this. You dimwits don't flip bricks. Everybody is about to move out of here except for one individual. He's staying with us for a couple of days. You staying. <laughs> one at a time, gentlemen. Come on out. You get patted down. down. Right Every time you come out of cell block, you get patted down. So you won't be going home today. What, because I was rapping? There's more to it than that. The deputy will be about to check on you in a few minutes. Hi on jail goodies, Justin's inspired to drop some bars. The officers have also got a line for him. The dude stays behind bars. May he find enlightenment in sobriety? This set of deviant kids gave the officers and prisoners a run for their money. They could bet the threats could make an ordinary kid cry. But a set of like-minded nerds who want to outdo the other would not budge. Tiny charges, some charges will get bigger and bigger, and you end up in a place like this. All right. You know how you get straight yeah. up your jaw. Ain't it's even worth talking to y'all. Talking to them, that's how I feel talking to you right now. Like I'm talking to a wall. I can't get through to you. The officers stated judgments and facts, but they were ignored. It was all huff and puff. It couldn't shake up the rest of these kids. Hard behind two sets, but you ain't hard in front of one. I'll make you sit on the piss, boy. These keys go to that gate. Give me a. One cell after another, a level above the previous, or so it seemed. But a mutual stance stays clear. The prisoners can only talk, so why fear what they couldn't do? It's not fun no more. They called me Dale. I'm 17 years old. Right now, I'm facing 13 to 50 years in prison. Three counts of a felony firearm. First place, I hopped on the phone trying to call was my mama, was my mother, my family. It's cats up there 13 facing life. I wish I could go back to school. I wake up crying every day, wishing I can hug my mom, be with my mama, dog. Dale spoke like a genuine man with experience in time and seasons. The good and bad times all together led him to where he stands now. This is his mother. She volunteered her time to come in and talk to you. Your decisions, your actions, they're not just affecting you. They're affecting them. This is how your choices are affecting them. To bring more empathy into the story, Dale's mother was brought along and you would believe that this would touch the parent-to-child coordination to make the kids have a change of heart. I told them exactly what was going to happen. Two weeks later, they don't discriminate against age. You go out there and you do something, you think you've grown? First time, couldn't get no type of program, no six months, anything, years. Especially, he has a brother. My son can't sleep at night. That's how much. Dale's mom is a passionate speaker. Seeing one loved one after a really long time like that can make one go hard. But the talk's result is what matters. And the kids glared like open lanterns with no reaction. You could not tell if the words even got to them. This might be like nerds. They care about school. They just care about fighting. If you don't knock me out, then I pretty much won't stop fighting. Christian's got strength, but doesn't know how to use it without getting in trouble. Until his past school year, which was eighth grade. When he got to school, he wanted to fight everybody. That's when the teacher wouldn't do anything. I got to school for that. I'm worried about him taking a fight too far and either hurting somebody. His parents are taking measures, but the solution's temporary. Christian needs to figure out how to relate with people with his words, not his fist. 
and be reintegrated into society like a normal person. Chris and his mom got into an argument as they were arguing. He finally raised his hand up to her and there's consequences to everything. Fighting nowadays is some shoot you, somebody will stab you or you will go. Scott's situation analysis is grim but accurate and the jail program's the only solution. Going to the jail because you can't hit or yell the anger out of me. Go in there and fight anybody. There are grown men in there that will, that will hurt him or kill him. Like everyone else on our list, Christian ain't worried about the program and gives the officers a rough time with his nonchalance. You, you mind? You like candy bars? What type of candy bar you like? Speak up, damn it! See. Who you think you're gonna be listening to? You ain't gonna listen to him? No. You will listen to him. Christian's boast isn't without substance. There's no barrier between him and the inmate, yet he challenges him without batting an eyelash. And fights ain't always fair. Fight one way or the other, you doing it. Like fighting, you need to go make some money. Look at his face. I remember them blue eyes. Okay. My eyes are green. Nothing the inmate throws at Christian worries him. And when the interview's over, he gives a parting shot guaranteed to make the inmate see red as a thank you for your time. What kind of grip you in? Oh, no. Hi. Me, bro. Me, bro. Me, bro. Me. He says take him off. I'm gonna take him off. I'm gonna leave you in here. You ain't no grit. Okay. He, ain't about that life. he isn't the only one in the group who refuses to be bullied into compliance by the inmates. For lack of a better word, Laren looks bored by their performance. I don't want scared straight to be like, so I can punch you in your face. They're gonna send you like this. You know what I'm gonna do? Give me that and fight me for it. I will beat you. Tell me how good an MMA works on the street. Dude. Oh, MMA don't work on the street because my trigger finger works better for kicks you got. I will shoot you. Really, don't fight me. I don't fight just to fight. In here? After watching the inmate release so much steam, Christian shuts him up with this declaration. He's an intelligent kid, so he wonders why he isn't using his talents legally. Girls get on my nerves. I had like 15 fights. The last fight I had busted this girl's head open. Cortazia's got more vices than some adults would ever have in their lifetime, and she ain't bothered about it. But thankfully, her family is. For um, possession of CDS and possession of marijuana. Why well, I'm worried about Cortazia's getting high, because I've seen what it did to my dog. Lakeisha's experienced the horrors of incarceration and doesn't want it for her kid, whose actions point to prison as her destination. Cortazia gives the officers hell at intake, which means her tour is going to be as dramatic as possible. What's funny? What's so funny? Take them shoes oh, off. Take them off. So you ain't going to so take you off are? your shoes? You, you are? Take off. 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 As the inmates interview, the inmates are immediately drawn to Cortazia and they probe to see what she's made of. They call me TK. I don't tolerate no disrespect. None at all. So. You ain't from I ain't, you ain't I ain't from I bang blood, homie. You not from You ain't from blood gang. She's made a sterner stuff than other teenagers as she doesn't dissolve into tears when cornered, but gives as much as she gets. Well, you think that cool? Have you been put on the set and everything? Are you just doing this for fun? <laughs> they gonna lay your ass down for playing. You don't do this for fun. You gonna I mean, if you ain't hood like me, ready to be down for the get down, man, please. So you need to get it together. You don't want to be no blood home, girl. If Queen thinks talking to Cortazia like an adult would yield better results, man, she's in for a shock. That strategy might work with others, but this girl's different. Huh? Hey, oh, I don't like it. I don't get, well, do something then. If you don't like me, I'll leave your face, do something. You ain't the only one who mama be in and out the in the tantrum. Is that something? It would be like KK speech blends TK and Queen's efforts, but the reaction is an optimistic. Get off my face, homie. Make me. Watch out. Make me. All right, Make me. All Blood. Right. What All the? Right. All right, I punch you. You gon' cut. Punch me. You be the man. Let her up. With the interview with the inmates being an abysmal failure, the officers try their luck again with Cortazia. I have never met a person who don't care so much. You don't give a about your life, man. Even know nothing about me, so I don't know care what y'all talking about. Enough. 
Finally, someone calls it. No part of the program succeeds in getting through, and everyone worries about where she's going to end up if she doesn't change. It's Tashiel, 13. I still I drink, and I fight with my mom. I'm disrespectful, and I fight with my brothers and sisters. Even though Tot Chell and Ty Lexis are sisters, they're as different as day and night as revealed minutes into the jail tour. I I not, not jail. Me and my sister be fighting because she be yelling at me. That's why when people want to hit you. <laughs> I want Ty Shell and Ty Lexis to go through the program together because they're sisters. And she fights her siblings. siblings. And she's very disrespectful. Everything is a joke to her. Having one delinquent a lot for a parent and dealing with two is more than Michelle can handle. So she signs up the siblings for the jail tour. Now to your sister right now, and you need to tell your sister that you're going to lead by example. Tell her, I love you, and I want you to do right. If you're here, I'm going to go do right, so I want you to do right, too. Do you love, do you love your sister? Being the eldest doesn't always equate to being the toughest, and Tychelle's tricky exterior cracks in prison. She love her. I love you. Do you mean it? No, sir. It's poor, you know that, right? Unfortunately, the tour ain't having the same effect on Ty Lexis, who seems even more hardened than before she came in. Matt. Did I want to stop communicating with her more? Do you believe that? Yes, sir. She just stood in her sister's face and said she loved her and then told her it wasn't true, basically. And it's, it's not going to go away. Words do not go away. Ty Lexis's disposition is so cold that even Taylor, another teen in the program, comments on it. Don't fight with my mom, and I got a better attitude. True to her promise in jail, Tychelle becomes a better person after the program, but the same can't be said for her younger sister. They don't that be there for each other, talk, communicate. I would like to have a better relationship with my sister. Family's a great motivator to do better, and if she can't feel anything for her sibling, how would Ty Lexis relate with others or be motivated to change? Hey, you the tough one. Who the gangster, huh? What's up, pussy boy? Huh? You think you're f***ing too old, huh? You think you're old? You want to look like you want to gang banging this stuff? You think you're f***ing scared now, man? Now break your mouth. When surrounded, most teenagers act defiantly, but very few act with lethal calm. Gang banging, fight. Gang? You're Blackstone. You're Blackstone? Can't even spell Blackstone, punk ass dude. Unsurprisingly, after the initial chaos, the inmates single Kenneth out as the teen with the heart of stone. That's the kind of thing they enjoy breaking, but would they be able to break him? Man, he don't even know no lit, man. He ain't in no game, man. For real. The next time, you ain't gonna leave with us. I'll let you. A kid confronts the officers with a knife when searched. A so-called martial artist learns some tough kids whose final hope of reform is meeting inmates. But sometimes not even that helps. Let's look at kids who flat out refuse to change despite their prison ordeal. This is a lineup room. The route that y'all were going, this is where y'all gonna end up at. Number two, step up. Do you fight with your mama? Argue. Does she antagonize you? You said you were fighting with people who antagonize you. You just said your mama doesn't antagonize you. A so-called martial artist learns some tough lessons in jail. Jalen's a smart ass, and I don't- Because I got into a fight with a kid. He swung at me, he missed a martial artist. I'm gonna make a katana out of this. Tor Classes, martial arts or not, he ain't no match for the inmates, and the sooner he realizes that, the better off he gonna be. Why do you disrespect your mother like that? she look at one side of the story. Somebody- Because you have a history out of your damn head beats Tai Chi any day if you ask me, at least in jail. But Jalen's too arrogant to see that, but carries on his glaring contest with Dirty. By the way, is the inmate's explanation of the name Dirty convincing to y'all? If you just sweet and smooth in here, alright? Cause you, you want another part to me. You and y'all, y'all be my b and they can't say y'all, cause why be mine? You got any questions? You speak yeah. now? It's like that nonstop. You got multiple people always messing with you, putting their hands on you. Be a bigger man. True. To do things right, to stay out of the place like this. Now, Jalen's got to be one of the most fearless kids in the program. How many kids ask questions to inmates who look that tough? Man, Jalen's so calm, it's almost like he's talking to his friends, not people whose presence should make him tremble.
we're here for, huh? He like the drinking. The screaming session's always scary for the kids, but not Jalen. He might as well be someplace else for all his reactions to the inmates' taunts. Their tiresome antics, however, start to get to some of the other kids. A kid with act the sponge, they better get creative because yelling isn't doing it. A teen whines like a puppy when he isn't allowed to fight an officer. Brandon is 16 years old and has a boorish attitude that guarantees he'll be back in prison in a year if he doesn't change, but this time it'll be as an inmate. The jail visit failed to make a lasting impression on Sean, and that is wild, because kids his age are supposed to be open to changes. Pretty boy gets in trouble when he poses for the cameras. Jose has an ongoing bet with the inmates about him crying like a baby and is determined to win. While he's at it, maybe he can get the inmates to cry instead. Well, thankfully, the experience ends with Jose making better choices. I'm Justin, I do drugs, I'm gang affiliated, and I run away. That's how you feel. You want to punch me in the face, punch me in the face. You know what I'm saying? But don't, don't expect me not to come back swinging. He's even got a poem for the jail tour. Justin has to be one of the most enthusiastic participants ever. It's probably because he has no plans of changing. Your mouth is yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. Turn around and face the wall. You're about to be searched. Where are your hands supposed to be? So you wore jeans and didn't wash them? paraphernalia! Intake for this group of kids isn't going smoothly, especially for Jamel and Justin. If you want to tick off the officers, at least have a better excuse than I wore the pants two days ago, dude. Well, if I was feeling froggy, you I would have You want to leap, little froggy? If I was feeling froggy, I would have leaped. Well, then why don't you go ahead and leap, little froggy? froggy? You don't wait in here. We run you from now on till you okay, leave here well, to run. Okay, stop because you're not listening. You want, oh, do you want to stand? Do you want to stand? Uh-uh, don't fight her. 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 Forget Justin, there's another troublemaker in the group. At least for now, the officers have their attention somewhere else and have forgotten the paraphernalia stunt. No. Oh, okay. I'm gonna hurry up. Let's go, let's say it's time to finish, you're finished. Hurry up and eat. Piece of that bread or something. When we give you a tray and you do not, and we will forcibly feed you. Mm. Tasty. Mm. 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 Get back, they gotta be washing. Mm. 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 Who's the name of that bread, yo? They have some sweet stuff, man. You know? yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye. The officers aren't getting through to Justin at all. This tour might just have shown him the perks of coming to jail, like yummy cake, rather than why he should stay out. It's time to start pouring it. I'm hot enough to score that I'd rather torture it. Like, I'm just here to inform the kids, nah? Actually warn the kids I'm hotter than glue. Dim wits don't flip bricks. You bricks. It's about to move out of here, except for one individual. He's staying with us. You're the rap star. To drop some bars. The officers also have a line for him. Dude is staying behind bars. These delinquents are meeting the inmates for the first time. It is sure to be a memorable encounter for the young offenders, as the inmates begin to immediately taunt them. Sitting straight up in the chairs, man. If you push them to the limit, we're gonna charge you along with them. Who fight? You fight? No, who gang? Get up, man. Swing that. You keep on acting like you acting. That's where you headed at. You think it's a joke? Make sure you yeah, sure now. The only thing that's saving you is that we was in here. Why acting like you acting? Your mom ain't gonna be able to save you real soon. 15-year-old Cortesia has gotten into trouble for fighting, drug abuse, and gangbanging on several occasions. 
Her mother, who has been incarcerated, worries for her, but she shows no signs of change. My name is Cortagia. The last fight I had busted this girl's head open. They want a sock with batteries in it. In possession of CDS and possession of marijuana. Because I seen what it did to my daughter. Bring him in. Take him out! Take him out! You ain't gonna take him out? Gonna take him out? No. Yeah, I ain't gonna be nobody. You straight are. up. You are? Oh, it's rolling. I don't do that. You gonna respect me. Right. What you from? You, you ain't this this Black gang. gang. Come up in here saying that boy. I will smash you out. You think that's cool? For playing. You don't do this for fun. You're gonna be in the ICU. You're gonna get your split to the white meat bleed now. You're gonna, you're gonna die. 25 year old KK, awaiting trial for assault and battery, is brought in to talk some sense into the delinquents. She gets into a confrontation with a stubborn teenager who persists on claiming her gang. I'm KK, I'm 25, and I'm Tiny's daughter. If you've seen Scare Straight before, then you've seen my mama Tiny. I want you to get mad, because I want to break your ass down. You, you ain't the only one who mama been in and out the penitentiary. All right. If I punch you, you going to curse. Punch me, you going to get the ass out of here. Let her up, let her up. This your pride for the for once, for once. You don't give a about your life, man. And you think you hard, baby, but you're not. These badges is the only thing saving Change. 13-year-old Nalasia belongs to a gang known as the KK, and she's proud to show off her gang signs. She admits to enjoy getting into fights with other gangs in her neighborhood, events in which she brings her younger sister along. Young lady, young lady, you are in my facility now. I'm Nalasia, and I'm 13. I fight, and I'm in the gang. We go in other neighborhoods, but they be messing with us, and then we just... I never lost a fight. The craziest fight that I ever got in was with a group of girls. My younger sister Kayla, when I fight, she's gonna fight with me. Akira and both her sisters are disobedient and all belong to a gang. They might think that they'll have each other's backs for life, but they're made aware that the prison system knows well enough to separate siblings from one another. This kid with my half sister. We're related because we all have the same dad. We knew that they needed it. If I see somebody trying to do something to my sister, I'm going to help them. So you better straighten up right now! You better get out my face, that's what you better do! What you going to do, Cupcake? Did you like this before your father passed away? No. Your dad looking down on you right now. You think he likes some of the things that's going on? I understand y'all hurt. Everybody goes through grief differently. When well, you get in there, they, so they make sure they separate families. 13-year-old Ty Shell and her 11-year-old sister, Ty Lexus, are brought on the show as disobedient and estranged siblings. The 11-year-old admitted that she wouldn't care even if her sister died. My name is Ty Shell, 13. I still I drink and I fight with my mom. My name is Ty Lex. I'm 11 years old. I'm disrespectful. I want Ty Shell and Ty Lex to go through the program together because they're sisters. If they learn something from it, they can help each other. Do you love your sister? Yes, I love my sister. Do you love your sister? So if your older sister dies tomorrow, what you gonna do? Did I want to stop communicating with her more? And you know what? You can't take words back. You know how much that hurt her? And it's, it's not gonna go away. The teens meet 17-year-old Jerron Tucker, who was incarcerated for credit card fraud. The young inmate shares his new life behind bars and pleads with his peers to stop all of their bad behaviors, or they will end up just like him. Young man coming in here. I had him in my office here about five months ago. I'm a school resource officer out here. I just turned 17. My first day here, it was like hell. Facing up to 35 years. A few months before I came, he told me, watch the people you hang out with. I got hit in the head so hard, that headache carried for three days. A girl throws a fist at an officer. Another kid squares up to an inmate twice his size. Then there is a kid so comfortable behind bars, he can't help but rap. The program is meant to scare kids straight, but these are the most evil kids on Beyond Scared Straight. Go! Go out now! Get me! Yes, sir. Fast for him! You want to get I want you to say one corporal K. You want to Cover up. Cover up. Yep, that's under arrest. Try to swing on by. When we talk about evil kids, it does not get more evil than Lay. Can you believe the 13-year-old took a swing at a cop? She does not look like she regrets her actions one bit. 
having a macho attitude. She didn't want to listen to nobody. Welcome to jail. There you go. Look at yourself in the window. So I did it if I wanted to, so I did it. Uh, okay. Well, to be fair, Officer Byers got exactly what she asked for. Though they should not swing at an officer. It's not very smart. No, Why you got your leg out like a damn kickstand? Stand up straight. Yes, sir. I think you just smiled at me. I don't think I did, sir. My name's Gary. I'm 15. I drink. I smoke weed. I pop pills. I love to fight. My dealing. I don't know to me. I kind of like getting hit, honestly. Yeah, he's about as tough as you can get. He's missing that chemical word field. Pain, so. I'm gonna f some bitches. Gareth is a loose cannon. He is more than ready to square up against anyone. I mean, what kind of kids like being hit? You're shaking. Are you cold? No, sir. You need a blanket? No, sir. Well, you all to be a fighter? Well, why are you damn shaking like a little bitch? They gonna jump on top of you. Oh. Come on with it. And this is what you really want. Hey, Gary, I love you. Get you. Next time. You hear that noise? That is the sound of freedom leaving. Gareth looks calm, cool, and collected, even if every single person in this unrefutable government institution is trying to intimidate him. Is this teen delinquent evil or just fearless? Since the jail visit, Gareth still sneaking around, smoking weed, still just pretty much just doing what he wants. Unfortunately, Gareth is one of those teens that the program could not save. Could something be wrong with the program? Or is this kid just the most evil teen to feature on the show? You're not ready to come to jail. But guess what? Jail is ready for you. But I'm telling you, that smile is going to get knocked so far off you, you're not even going to believe it. I'm a risk taker. I have about like 25 fights. When I fought this girl, I broke a collarbone. If I know it's a, a, a gun in the tunnel, I'm not going to run in the tunnel. Some women that's incarcerated right now, Tashara, are in there because they didn't. When you see a kid smile, even as the threat of prison looms in their face, is Tashara as evil as she thinks? Or will prison humble her? I smell fear. I smell fear. Taishara is in prison, and she looks kind of terrified. Despite that, she is unwilling to show any respect to authorities or any of the inmates. My name is Erica. You bad? Do some bitch! What you gonna do about it? You so bad? Do some bitch! You ain't so damn bad now! What you gonna do, bitch? Dad? So bad? This teen is unfazed by the antics of the inmates, despite how violent and loud they get. This big 14-year-old is not afraid of anyone. The prison experience must have had some impact on the young girl. However, it was obvious not enough to keep her out of trouble. You talking to them, that's how I feel talking to you right now. Like I'm talking to a wall. The program has taken in some new kids to be scared straight. Some of them look scared, but the feeling does not extend to Jordan, who is as stubborn as a brick wall. It's not fun no more. They called me Dale. I'm 17, do over. It's to listen to everything my mother told me. All I remember is popping. Jordan is left tough when he is near enough for some inmates to touch him. Even if he no longer wears a smile, he still has his toughness. A robbery, home invasion, first degree, a larceny of a felony firearm. First person I hopped on the phone trying to call was my mama. 15 years old, dog. This cat's up there, 13, facing life. Next year is my year to go to prom. It's over for me. No, I'm waking up with a bunkie that I damn near don't even know. And also talk to your parents, because like I told you earlier, your decisions, your actions, they're not just affecting you. This is how your choices are affecting them. 
several tough looking inmates were not enough to tear down Jordan's walls. But it just takes one inmate to make a see a softer side to this young daredevil. I told him exactly what was going to happen. Two weeks later, you go out there and you do something you think you grown, they're going to do the same like thing that they did to him. He's tried as an adult. Years. It's very, very hard for me to sleep. My son can't sleep at night. That's how much he missed his brother. That, that, that was his best friend. And instantly, it makes me th think of my son. If you thought Dale's story was sad, then your heart will break when you hear how his incarceration affected Dale's mom. Nothing could have prepared Jordan for that. This is one happy time the program worked. Let's go! Let's go! Step in, ladies and gentlemen, step in! Those one and two. You can't get out of here. I'm hungry for real. Yeah. Jeez. You got the munchies. You got about a minute and a half. When I say it's time to finish, you're finished. These kids are the worst of the worst. That is why they are locked up. However, locking up the kids has made most of them sober, except for Justin, who has the munchies. Right now. What's up? What's up? Check me out. So I've got this dormantness of nothing but important shit and not been storing it, and huh? Actually, what? Huh? For real? So why you got your hair cut like that? Why are you disrespecting your mom? Like an end of pregnancy. Then answer me! She's not in here for beating up a female. She's in here for beating up a guy. Get, get, up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Come around this way. I'm gonna let her lay down on the table. Somebody throw me a white sheet. You, guess what? You are officially a dead man walking. Steven is perhaps one of the most evil kids on the show. He was easily lifted off his feet by one inmate and threatened with death, but he does not look bothered one bit. What's up? You like to fight, homie? Bitch, homie, use a pop tart. I see right through you, homie. Your eyes glossy. Your eyes glossy, homie. Use a pop tart. You sweet in the middle, homie. You pop tart it out. You think you hard? If a scary inmate called me a pop tart, I'd shit my pants. This hardcore kid shows no fear. My name is Brindley. I'm 17. I'm the nicest person ever. I'd bite your nose off if you was up in here. So you bring up in here, and I'm gonna crash your landing. Right now, you punk. You touch me, I'll f you up, man. I don't get too. You should have hit me. You told me because you was mad at her. She pissed you off. Why didn't you hit him? You don't like it? The next set of kids are not nice. And one you don't understand. What you Let's like? try that again. Okay. And you better watch your mouth. You are not at home, gentlemen. You are not at home. You will not disrespect me in my house. Is that is that understood? Well, don't you, boy? The record has it that the only legendary kid whom the Beyond Scared Straight program would not tame is Barney. Now, apparently, he didn't respect the officers when he stepped onto the show. Bitch, I'll put me on the ground then. Why don't you bitch? Did you touch me like a stand up? No. He said he don't want to stand up. Stand up. Park up a lizard. Yep. I uh, jail goodies. Justin's inspired to drop some bars. The officers have also got a line for him. The dude stays behind bars. May he find enlightenment in sobriety. Take that damn smile. Bring him close. Next we'll slide down to the next one. Come on. Come on. Right this set of deviant kids gave the officers and prisoners a run for their money. They could bet the threats could make an ordinary kid cry, but a set of like minded nerds who want to outdo the other would not budge. Some charges will get bigger and bigger, and you'll end up in a place like this. All right? You know how you get straight yeah. Ain't even worth talking to y'all. Talking to them, that's how I feel talking to you right now. Like I'm talking to a wall. I can't get through to you. The officers stated judgments and facts, but they were ignored. It was all huff and puff. It couldn't shake up the rest of these kids. Hard behind two sets, but you ain't hard in front of one. Make you sit out of piss, boy. These peas go to that gate. Give me a one cell after another, a level above the previous, or so it seemed. But a mutual stance stays clear. The prisoners can only talk, so why fear what they couldn't do? It's not funny no more. 
They called me Dale. I'm 17 years old. Right now, I'm facing 13 to 50 years in prison. Three counts of a felony firearm. First person I hopped on the phone trying to call was my mama, was my mother, my family. It's cats up there, 13, facing life. I wish I could go back to school. I wake up crying every day, wishing I could hug my mama, be with my mama, dog. Dale spoke like a genuine man with experience in time and seasons. The good and bad times all together led him to where he stands now. This is his mother. She volunteered her time to come in and talk to you. Your decisions, your actions, they're not just affecting you, they're affecting them. This is how your choices are affecting them. To bring more empathy into the story, Dale's mother was brought along and you would believe that this would touch the parent-to-child coordination to make the kids have a change of heart. I told them exactly what was going to happen. Two weeks later, they don't discriminate against age. You go out there and you do something, you think you grown? First time, couldn't get no type of program. Years old. No six months, anything, years. Especially, he has a brother. My son can't sleep at night, that's how much. Dale's mom is a passionate speaker. Seeing one loved one after a really long time like that can make one go hard. But the talk's result is what matters. And the kids glared like open lanterns with no reaction. You could not tell if the words even got to them. This might be like nerds. They care about school. They just care about fighting. If you don't knock me out, then I pretty much won't stop fighting. Christian's got strength but doesn't know how to use it without getting in trouble. Until his past school year, which was eighth grade. When he got to school, he wanted to fight everybody. Some of the teacher wouldn't do anything. I got to school for that. I'm worried about him taking a fight too far and either hurting somebody. His parents are taking measures, but the solution's temporary. Christian needs to figure out how to relate with people with his words, not his fist, and be reintegrated into society like a normal person. Chris and his mom got into an argument. As they were arguing, he finally raised his hand up to her, and there's consequences to everything. Fighting nowadays is some shoot you, somebody will stab you, or you will go. Scott's situation analysis is grim but accurate, and the jail program's the only solution. Going to the jail, because you can't hit or yell the anger out of me. Go in there and fight anybody. There are grown men in there that will, that will hurt him or kill him. Like everyone else on our list, Christian ain't worried about the program and gives the officers a rough time with his nonchalance. You, you mind? You like candy bars? What type of candy bar you like? Speak up! Damn it! Who you think you gonna be listening to? You ain't gonna listen to him? No. You will listen to him. Christian's boast isn't without substance. There's no barrier between him and the inmate, yet he challenges him without batting an eyelash. And fights ain't always fair. Fight one way or the other, you doing it. Like fighting, you need to go make some money. Look at his face. I don't remember them blue eyes. Okay. My eyes are green. Nothing the inmate throws at Christian worries him. And when the interview's over, he gives a parting shot guaranteed to make the inmate see red as a thank you for your time. What kind of grip you in? Oh, no. Hi. Oh, he's talking to me, bro. Oh, he's talking to me, bro. He says take him off. 17 and one, I'm going to take him off. One more time, 17. I'm going to leave you in here. No, no, what? I'm going to leave you in here. I know they're going to stand up for they say, you ain't no grip. Okay. He ain't about that life. He isn't the only one in the group who refuses to be bullied into compliance by the inmates. For lack of a better word, Laren looks bored by their performance. I want scared straight to be like, so I can punch you in your face. They gonna send you like this. You know what I'm gonna do? Give me that and fight me for it. I will beat you. Tell me how good that MMA works on the street. Oh, MMA don't work on the street because my trigger finger works fast. The kicks you got, I will shoot you. Really, boy. Me. I don't fly just to fight. In here? After watching the inmate release so much steam, Christian shuts him up with this declaration. He's an intelligent kid, so he wonders why he isn't using his talents legally. Girls get on my nerves. I had like 15 fights. The last fight I had busted this girl's head open. Cortazia's got more vices than some adults would ever have in their lifetime, and she ain't bothered about it. But thankfully, her family is. Or um, possession of CDS and possession of marijuana. Why I'm worried about Cortacia's getting high because I seen what it did to my dog. Lakeisha's experienced the horrors of incarceration and doesn't want it for her kid, whose actions point to prison as her destination. Cortazia gives the officers hell at intake, which means her tour is going to be as dramatic as possible.
What's what? funny? Mm -hmm. What's so funny? Take them shoes oh, off. Uh, take them off so you ain't gonna so take you off your shoes. You, you are take off. 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 If Queen thinks talking to Cortazia like an adult would yield better results, man, she's in for a shock. That strategy might work with others, but this girl's different. Huh? I don't like it. I don't get, well, do something then. If you don't like me, I'll leave your face, do something. You ain't the only one who mama been in and out the in the tentry. That's fine. something? It would be like KK speech blends TK and Queen's efforts, but the reaction is not optimistic. Face, make me watch out. Make me. All right, make me. All blood. Right. What the? All right. All right. My punch you. You gonna cut? Punch me. Punch me. Punch me. Punch me. Punch me. With the interview with the inmates being an abysmal failure, the officers try their luck again with Cortazia. I have never met a person who don't care so much. You don't give a about your life, man. Even know nothing about me, so I don't I know care enough. what y'all talking about. Enough. Finally, someone calls it. No part of the program succeeds in getting through, and everyone worries about where she's going to end up if she doesn't change. It's Tashil, 13. I still I drink, and I fight with my mom. I'm disrespectful, and I fight with my brothers and sisters. Even though Tachel and Ty Lexis are sisters, they're as different as day and night, as revealed minutes into the jail tour. Me and my sister be fighting because she be yelling at me. That's why when people want to hit you. <laughs> I want Tashiel and Talex to go through the program together because they're sisters. And she fights her siblings. And she's very disrespectful. Everything's as a joke to her. Having one delinquent a lot for a parent and dealing with two is more than Michelle can handle. So she signs up the siblings for the jail tour. Turn that to your sister right now. And you need to tell your sister that you're going to lead by example. Talex, I love you. And I want you to do right. If you're here, I'm going to do right. So I want you to do right, too. Do you love, do you love your sister? Being the eldest doesn't always equate to being the toughest, and Tychel's tricky exterior cracks in prison. Does you love her? I love you. Do you mean it? No, sir. It's poor, you know that, right? Unfortunately, the tour ain't having the same effect on Ty Lexis, who seems even more hardened than before she came in. Back. Did I want to stop communicating with her more? Do you believe that? Yes, sir. She just stood in her sister's face and said she loved her, and then told her, it wasn't true, basically. And it's, it's not going to go away. Words do not go away. Ty Lexus's disposition is so cold that even Taylor, another teen in the program, comments on it. Don't fight with my mom. And I got a better attitude. True to her promise in jail, Tychel becomes a better person after the program. But the same can't be said for her younger sister. They don't that be there for each other, talk, communicate. I would like to have a better relationship with my sister. Family's a great motivator to do better. And if she can't feel anything for her sibling, how would Ty Lexis relate with others or be motivated to change? Hey, here. You the tough one. Who the gangster, huh? What's up, Who pussy tough, boy? Huh? You think you're <laughs> tough, huh? You think you're hard? You don't want to look like you're one of them gangbangers. You think you're scared now, man? You better break your mother. When surrounded, most teenagers act defiantly, but very few act with lethal calm. Gang, gang, gang. You're Blackstone. You're Blackstone? Can't even spell Blackstone, punk ass dude. Unsurprisingly, after the initial chaos, the inmates single Kenneth out as the teen with the heart of stone. That's the kind of thing they enjoy breaking, but would they be able to break him? Man, he don't even know no lit, man. He ain't in no gang, man. For real. <laughs> 